prepare for death. It's a journey we'll all take. Learn how to make it a path to heaven's gate. Learn how to make it a path to heaven's gate. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidil Anbiya wal Mursaleen. Amma ba'd fa'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani r-rajim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Wa salatu wa salamu alayka ya Rasulullah. Wa ala alika wa ashabika ya Habibullah. Wa salatu wa salamu alayka ya Nabiyyallah. Wa ala alika wa ashabika ya Nurullah. Sayyiduna Abu Bakr Siddiq radiyallahu ta'ala an has stated, Reciting Salat upon the noblest Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam removes the sins so quickly that even the water cannot extinguish the fire with such swiftness. And sending Salam upon the beloved Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam is better than setting the slaves free. Sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. My dear viewers, Alhamdulillah, in this silsila of the discussion of death. In the last episode, I discussed about Munkar and Nakir. And inshallah, in this episode, I shall discuss about what is Illiyin. Hazrat ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala an asked Ka'ab Ahba radiallahu ta'ala an regarding what is meant by the verse Inna kitab al abrari lafi Illiyin. So he said, when the soul of a mu'min is removed, it is carried towards the skies by the angels. Then groups of angels come to it and give it glad tidings of Jannah until they carry it up to Arsh Ilahi. The angels then bring forth a kitab from under the Arsh. They write something in it and then place a seal onto it. Thereafter, replacing the kitab from where they brought it, so that on the day of accountability, his salvation is proven by virtue of this kitab. In other words, the record book. Which means that when the soul of the evildoers will be taken towards the skies, then the sky will refuse to accept it. It will be thrown down towards the earth, and the earth will also refuse to accept it. So it will be taken beyond the Sidjin which is in the seventh earth. And this is the abyss of shaitan. From there, a book will be brought forth. Something will be written in it, and a seal will be placed onto it, which will serve as confirmation of his destruction for the day of accountability. Hazrat Abdul Aziz reports that when the soul of a mu'min is carried towards the skies, then the angels say, Pure is that Allah, who saved this servant, from the clutches of shaitan. Hazrat Muawiyah ibn Sufyan radiallahu ta'ala an reports, I heard from Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam that there was a person who sinned continuously and all of them were killed unjustly. He then went to a church to establish whether his tawbah would be accepted or not. In other words, he asked the rahib if his repentance will be accepted. The Rahib who was there said, no, it will not be accepted. So he killed the Rahib as well. He then went to a second Rahib and asked the same question to him and he too gave the same answer. So he killed him as well. He then went to a third Rahib and asked him the very same question and he too gave the same answer. So he killed him as well. He then went to a Rahib and asked the same question to him. He answered, By Allah, if I say that Allah does not accept the tawbah of those who repent, then I will be a liar. There is a place of worship not far from here. So go there and worship Allah with the other worshippers. This person then went towards that place of worship. He was still on his way there. When death came upon him, after his death, Allah sent the angels of mercy and angels of punishment to Adam. Both these groups of angels began to differ with each other. So Allah Almighty appointed an angel as an impartial judge and commanded him 
to see if the person was closer to the locality of sinful people. If he was, then he should be counted amongst the sinners, and his soul should be handed over to the angels of punishment. And if he was closer to the locality of pious people, then he should be handed over to the angels of mercy. When the angel measured the distance, it was concluded that he was closer to the locality of the pious people. And he was only closer to the locality of the pious people by one phalange. So he was forgiven. Hazrat Abu Sa'id Khudri radiallahu ta'ala an, reported that Allah Almighty commanded the locality of the evil doers that it should become further away. And he commanded the locality of the pious people to come closer. Hazrat Hassan mentions that when the time of a mu'min's death nears, then 500 angels descend to remove his soul and they carry him towards the sky over the earth. Whilst on their way, they meet with the souls of other true believers. These souls ask the angels about this person and the angels say, he has arrived here after being relieved from intense distress. These souls then query from this soul about many things and they even asked about their brothers and friends. It replies, they are just as you had seen them, etc. Then they don't even ask about someone who died even before the newly arrived soul. The soul says, did he not come to you? They ask, did he really die? It replies, by Allah, he has already died. They then say he has probably ended up hell. This is a very bad boat. Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala an reported, a mu'min is given glad tidings even before his soul is removed. When his soul is removed, he calls out, and with the exception of the humans and jinns, all the big and small animals living in the house are able to hear it. He says, take me swiftly towards the court of the most merciful of those who show mercy. When he is laid to rest in his grave, he is brought to sit and all that which he was promised is shown to him. And his grave is laden with flowers and fragrances. He says to Allah Almighty, O oh Allah, send me forth quickly. Allah Almighty says to him, it is still not the time for that. As many of you, your brothers and sisters, are not with you as yet. Yes, your eyes will become cool, so sleep. Hazrat Abu Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala an says, By Allah, no person on this earth would have slept such a peaceful sleep as he that deceased sleeps until he is raised on the day of Qiyamah to hear the glad tidings. Hazrat Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala an reported that Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam said, No person leaves the earth without seeing his abode in Jannat or Jahannam. He sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam said, When he is about to die, then two lines of angels stand there, whose faces glow like the sun, and the dying person is able to see them, whilst none other can see them, but you feel that the deceased is looking towards you. Every angel has with him the coffin of Jannat and Jannati fragrances. If the dying person is a mu'min, the angels give him glad tidings of Jannat. They say, O oh, content soul, come towards the pleasure of Allah and towards Jannat. For Allah has arranged for you those bounties that are better than the world and all that is in it. The angels give him this glad tiding in a very gentle and compassionate tone. Then one after the other, his soul is removed from every nail and every joint, and this is made easy upon him, even though you think of it as severe, until such a time comes that the soul comes under the chin. It only feels a little more distress in coming out, compared to what a child feels when coming out of the womb of the mother. The angels then argue with each other about who will have the honor of carrying his soul. Finally, Malakul Maut takes the soul. Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam then recited this verse of the Holy Quran, part 21, Surah Sajda, verse 11. قُلْ يَتَوَفَّاكُمْ مَلَكُ الْمَوْتِ الَّذِي وُكِّلَ بِكُمْ Malakul Maut, 
wraps it in a white cloth and keeps it in his lap, hugging it with such love that even a mother does not hug her child. It then gives off a fragrance more beautiful than musk, which the angels are able to smell. They say, O oh, pure soul, O oh, pure fragrance, welcome. They then make a dua maghfira for him. The doors of the skies are open for him. When he reaches any door, the angels there make dua maghfira for him until he is presented in the court of Allah Azawajal. So Allah says, O oh, pure soul and pure body, welcome here. Then when Allah Almighty says, Marhaba to everyone, in other words, welcome, then everyone says Marhaba to him and all his difficulties are alleviated. He is then commanded, take the pure soul into Jannat, allow it to observe its final abode and show him all the bounties that I have prepared for him. Take him towards the earth, for I have ordained that I will create it from dust and I will enter it into dust, and then I will rise it from dust again. Now he will regard returning to the earth as more distressful than leaving the body, and it will say, Are you returning me to the same body from which I have come after being given salvation? The angels will say, This is what we have been commanded to do. The angels will bring the soul back within the space of time it takes the people to give the deceased ghusl and kafan. They will then enter the soul into the body and kafan. When the soul of an unbeliever comes up, the angels take it and slam it onto the earth, and this causes it to bounce up towards the sky. When it goes up towards the sky, the angels of sky strike it so it reaches the lowest level of the earth. It is reported that a person died in Madain and he was shrouded. In other words, he had been given kafan. After a little while, he was seen moving and he said, there are some people with dyed beards in this masjid. He cursed Hazrat Abu Bakr and Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhumah and they make tabarra with them and those who have descended to remove my soul are disgusted with them and are cursing them he said these words and then fell into death again I pray to Allah that he gives us all the ability that we lead a pious life full of blessings and I pray to Allah that he gives us the ability they were able to have a good ending. I mean, bijahin nabi al amin, sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa alihi wa sallam. Sallu ala al habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa alihi wa sallam. Prepare for death, it's a journey we'll all take. Learn how to make it a path to heaven's gate. Learn how to make it a path to heaven's gate.